Howdy folks. A couple weeks ago Jamie and I hiked the Rail Trail, which follows a railroad from Lamy to Santa Fe, except we did it in the opposite direction. This is a fairly flat, very well managed trail. I think it's mostly used by bicyclists as the terrain is appropriate for that. However, we decided to take the 12 miles on foot. And it is, uh, to be honest, a somewhat beautiful but nondescript. Instead of forcing you to watch about eight minutes of uh, us walking along the um, desert terrain of Santa Fe, I thought that I would narrate over this with uh, a description of the history of Santa Fe from the Santa Fe Tourism Board link in the description below. I have to admit that I did not yet have my proper camera mount, so as you can see in the video at present, <clears throat> the world is canted at about a 30 degree angle. My apologies. Um, I did correct this later in the video, but for right now you're just going to have to deal with uh, the world slightly askew. The following is the history of Santa Fe. I have not fact-checked any of this, so it is up to you to either believe or confirm the information from the Santa Fe Tourism Board. Thirteen years before Plymouth Colony was settled by the Mayflower Pilgrims, Santa Fe, New Mexico was established with a small cluster of European-type dwellings. It would soon become the seat of power for the Spanish Empire north of the Rio Grande. Santa Fe is the oldest capital city in the United States and the oldest European community west of the Mississippi. While Santa Fe was inhabited on a very small scale in 1607, it was truly settled by the conquistador Don Pedro de Peralta in 1609 to 1610. Santa Fe is the site of both the oldest public building in America, the Palace of the Governors, and the nation's oldest community celebration, the Santa Fe Fiesta established in 1712 to commemorate the Spanish reconquest of New Mexico in the summer of 1692. Peralta and his men laid out the plan for Santa Fe at the base of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains on the site of the ancient Pueblo Indian ruin of Capoge, or place of shell beads near the water. The city has been the capital of the Spanish Kingdom of New Mexico, the Mexican province of Nuevo Mexico, the American Territory of New Mexico, which contained what is today Arizona and New Mexico, and since 1912, the state of New Mexico. Santa Fe, in fact, was the first foreign capital overtaken by the United States when, in 1846, General Stephen Watts Kearney captured it during the Mexican-American War. Santa Fe's history may be divided into six periods, which will be described below. Settlement, Revolt, and Reconquest, 1607 to 1692. For a period of 70 years, beginning in the early 17th century, Spanish soldiers and officials, as well as Franciscan missionaries, sought to subjugate and convert the Pueblo Indians of the region. The indigenous population at the time was close to 100,000 people, who spoke nine basic languages and lived in an estimated 70 multi-story adobe towns, or pueblos many of which exist today. In 1680, Pueblo Indians revolted against the estimated 2,500 Spanish colonists in New Mexico, killing 400 of them and driving the rest back into Mexico. The conquering Pueblos sacked Santa Fe and burned most of the buildings, except for the Palace of the Governors. Pueblo Indians occupied Santa Fe until 1692, when Don Diego de Vargas reconquered the region and entered the capital city after a bloodless siege. Established Spanish Empire, 1692 to 1821. Santa Fe grew and prospered as a city. Spanish authorities and missionaries, under pressure from constant raids by nomadic Indians and often bloody wars with the Comanches, Apaches, and Navajos, formed an alliance with the Pueblo Indians and maintained a successful religious and civil policy of peaceful coexistence. The Spanish policy of closed empire also heavily influenced the lives of most Santa Feans during these years, as trade was restricted to Americans, British, and French. The Mexican Period, 1821 to 
1846. When Mexico gained its independence from Spain, Santa Fe became the capital of the province of New Mexico. The Spanish policy of closed empire ended, and American trappers and traders moved into the region. William Becknell opened the 1,000-mile-long Santa Fe Trail, leaving from Franklin, Missouri with 21 men and a pack train full of goods. In those days, aggressive Yankee traders used Santa Fe's plaza as a stock corral. Americans found Santa Fe and New Mexico not as exotic as they'd thought. One traveler called the region the Siberia of the Mexican Republic. For a brief period in 1837, northern New Mexico farmers rebelled against Mexican rule, killed the provincial governor in what has been called the Chimayo Rebellion, named after a village north of Santa Fe, and occupied the capital. The insurrectionists were soon defeated, however. Three years later, Santa Fe was peaceful enough to see the first planting of cottonwood trees around the plaza. Territorial period, 1846 to 1912. On August 18, 1846, in the early period of the Mexican-American War, an American Army General, Stephen Watts Kearney, took Santa Fe and raised the American flag over the plaza. Two years later, Mexico signed the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, ceding New Mexico and California to the United States. In 1851, Jean B. Lamy arrived in Santa Fe. Eighteen years later, he began construction of the St. Francis Cathedral. Archbishop Lamy is the model for the leading character in Willa Cather's book, Death Comes for the Archbishop. For a few days in March 1863, the Confederate flag of General Henry Sibley flew over Santa Fe until he was defeated by Union troops. With the arrival of the Telegraph in 1868 and the coming of the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad in 1880, Santa Fe and New Mexico underwent an economic revolution. Corruption in government, however, accompanied the growth, and President Rutherford B. Hayes appointed Lew Wallace as a territorial governor to, quote, clean up New Mexico. Wallace did such a good job that Billy the Kid threatened to come up to Santa Fe and kill him. Thankfully, Billy failed, and Wallace went on to finish his novel, Ben-Hur, while territorial governor. That brings us to statehood from 1912 to present, for which I suggest you check out the New Mexico Museum of History in Santa Fe. Hopefully you all can join us soon. Until then, thanks so much. Have a wonderful day.